A lot of you have asked for a full in-depth video dedicated to Carly, so here you go. Now, full disclosure, Carly's not paying me to produce this video, but I do get a small commission if you decide to buy the adapter through the link. Now, that being said, my goal here is not to just sell a bunch of adapters. I really just want to walk you through all the functions and features of the app, and then you guys can kind of decide for yourself, you know, whether or not it's something that you want to buy. For those of you who are new here, I actually made my first Carly video back in 2017, and it's kind of cool to go from like being a paying customer, just like making YouTube videos in my parents' driveway, to uh, getting the attention of their marketing team and being able to partner together on a video like this. So for everything that I'm going to show you in this video, you're going to need the official Carly adapter as well as the paid version of the app. Now there is like a free light version that you could check out, but it's really limited. And if you're buying the adapter anyway, it just makes sense to buy the app at the same time. I think there's even a little discount if you like bundle them together, but the new adapter works for both iOS and Android. So to get started, you're just going to plug the Carly adapter into your car's OBD port. And then we're going to put the car into accessory mode. From there, we'll open up the Carly app. And then this is gonna give you like an overview of some of the popular features here. Now, if you go into current vehicle, this is where you're gonna add your car so you can click on that. You can see that I've already got my E90 in there as well as the FRS. But if you wanted to add a new car, you just go to add new car at the bottom. And then from this screen, you can kind of see all the different brands that Carly supports. Uh, this video is gonna be focused on BMW, obviously. So you would just go into BMW and then you just choose your car from the list here. But I've already got my car added in here, so we're going to go to the main main screen here. We're gonna hit connect down at the bottom. Then once you hit connect, it's automatically gonna connect to your adapter via Bluetooth. So on this main screen, it's gonna show you like the popular features of the app. And then if you go down to the bottom right corner here where it says features, that's gonna show you all the different features all on one screen. So let's start off with the health diagnostics. You can go to the bottom where it says check for issues. You can click that. And from there, it's gonna run a full diagnostic scan on your car. And then from there, you can read and clear BMW specific fault codes. So one quick tip here with the health diagnostics is that your car kind of stores and accumulates these codes over time. So when you're trying to diagnose a new issue, you can do clear issues at the bottom. That's gonna reset everything. And then you can drive around for a day or two and just see which codes come back. So one kind of cool thing with the health check with Carly is that it not only reads you the fault codes, but it also kind of tells you like how serious they are. So for example, this one says I drive CCC one issue. If I click on that, it says not serious. So from there you can kind of decide like, is this something that I can kind of casually investigate or is this something so serious that I shouldn't be driving my car at all until I figure it out. So the next feature that we'll check out is the live data feature. This allows you to configure different gauges on your car and there's literally hundreds of parameters that you can check out and then you can kind of see like a live view of them as you're driving. And Carly allows you to configure six different parameters at a time. So we'll con do continue to live data. And then these are the ones that I configured myself. Um, coolant temperature, cooling unit output, motor temperature, oil temperature sensor, engine speed, actual water pump speed, and battery voltage. Now it's really nice to have these gauges because the E90s are like really notorious for overheating and having issues with the cooling system. So to be able to see all these different temperatures, it's a really nice feature, as well as like being able to see the water pump speed, you know, make sure your water pump is actually working. Um, but yeah, it's really important, especially because the E90 does not have any uh, temperature gauges on the gauge cluster. To me, I always thought that that was weird, but with Carly, now you can see that. Now, if you press on the dashboard thing, it's gonna switch to like a gauge view, but personally, I find that the live data screen with just the numbers is a little bit easier for me to read at a glance. So the next feature we're gonna look at is the used car check. This feature can kind of help you, you know, avoid buying a bad car that's been tampered with or the mileage has been messed with. This is gonna look for uh, inconsistencies throughout the car, so we'll click on that. We'll go to continue to car check. And then this is gonna run another little diagnostic here. So the first one says vehicle identification numbers. Every vehicle has a unique identification number which is saved in several different places in the car and we check to see that those are genuine. So if we click that, this is gonna confirm that the VIN from the ignition, the lights and the engine are all matching. So that's a good sign so far. If you check on the mileage thing, that's what confirms like whether or not the mileage has ever been tampered with and it kind of shows you like an average mileage for your car's age. And looking at this, 
It shows that my car is within the average mileage for a car of this year. So one kind of cool thing that you can check out here at the bottom where it says other data, it actually shows you the exact date that your car was built. So for this car, it's saying February 28th, 2006. Must have been a great day. So just going down the list here, the next thing is the digital garage. And this is gonna store all of your um, diagnosis. Anytime that you run a diagnostic on the car, it's gonna store a little file in here with the date, as well as coding backups, which I'll get to in a minute. Basically, anytime that you code your car through Carly, it's gonna create a backup. That way you can always revert back to how it was. Let's say you code a bunch of stuff and then something's not working the way that it used to, you can always revert back and it shows you a list with the actual date that you did the coding, which is kind of cool. So next let's talk about coding, which is probably one of the things that I think Carly is like the most well known for. And basically if you're unfamiliar with coding and how it works, your car has all these different options that are baked into it that are either turned on or off depending on which market you live in. Now with coding, with Carly, it's gonna show you a list view of all those options and you can turn them on or off based on your own preference, not just what the market decided that you should have in your car. So we'll click on coding here and we'll do coding possibilities and that's going to read out all the different options that are available based on which bmw you have now the newer ones are going to have more options might be some more stuff that you're not going to see here but uh, this is going to be what options are available for the e90 platform so just taking a look here at the modules that you can customize on the e90 generation you have comfort access you have heating engine start stop uh, the dashboard instrument cluster, there's some cool things that I'll show you in a minute there with that. Uh, FRM, lights and mirrors, that's one of the ones that I've coded the most options on. Uh, and then the other main one here at the bottom is iDrive. There's a cool trick that I'll show you with that too. So a perfect example of that is that here in the US, we just love lawsuits. It's like one of our nation's pastimes. And because of that, any car that has a screen has to have a legal disclaimer. Anytime that you start the car that says, hey, don't use the screen while you're driving. We don't want you to sue us if you have an accident. But with Carly, you can actually go ahead and disable that disclaimer. Like if you had your car for a couple years, you've seen that literally thousands of times. It's like, okay, we get it. We don't have to see that every single time that we start the car. So with Carly, you can actually go ahead and turn that off. So in order to code something, you're gonna to wanna to turn on the engine. That way the battery doesn't die in the middle of coding. That would be bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the garage really quick. That way I don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning while I'm doing this. So we're just gonna press the ignition. So to code that disclaimer off, we're just gonna scroll down to iDrive and then read out CCC. It's gonna make a backup really quick while it connects. Then you can hit okay. And then we're gonna find this thing that says legal disclaimer US display time. For ours it says 10 seconds. We're gonna change that to zero seconds because we don't want it to show up at all. And then we'll hit code now. Then you can just agree to this disclaimer and hit agree code now. And that's going to start the coding. When it's done, it's gonna say coding successful. From there, you can turn the car off and then turn it back on again. And if we did everything right, that disclaimer shouldn't show up again. Nice. So just scrolling through here, you can see that there's tons of different things that you can either turn on and off based on your own preference. Um, a couple of my favorites, uh, one is like turning off the voltage check that makes LED lights flicker. Um, basically on these cars, the car does a voltage check of all the lights on the car. And if you have aftermarket LEDs, it's gonna make them flicker for a couple seconds whenever you start the car up. But with this, you can actually go ahead and turn that off. That way they're not flickering every time. It kind of looks weird. Some people like it. I think it looks like the car's broken, but I always turn that off. Um, a couple other things, uh, the digital speedometer, it's kind of like a cool party trick that you can set up uh, that's like the little screen in between the gauges. You can have a speedometer there. Um, the comfort close where you either hold down the button on your door handle and it rolls up all the windows or you can have it like hold down the lock button on your key fob. That will also roll up the windows if you code it that way. Uh, you can even turn up the brightness of your angel eyes. But yeah, there's just tons of different things on here. When you get this app, you're gonna spend a whole day just playing with all these different features, turning things on and off. Just a word of warning with that though, you only want to code one thing at a time. You got to remember the computers in these cars are from 2006, so they can't handle just like being bombarded with different codings. Just do one thing at a time, take it slow, uh, go easy on it, I guess. 
Um, people have asked like, do you have to leave the adapter plugged in after you code something? The answer is no, it actually writes onto the car's computer. So once the coding is finished, you turn the car off, you can actually go ahead and unplug the adapter and the coding will be saved to the car. One last little warning with the adapter is you don't want to leave it plugged in all the time because it does have like a slight parasitic effect on the battery. So you don't want to leave it like plugged in overnight or anything like that. When you're done driving or you're done using it for the day, just unplug it, set it in your glove box and you're ready to go for the next time. So the next thing here is the service reset. Now technically I know you can do that through the car, through the BC stock you can go through and it's kind of a process. Uh, like every time I do it, I have to look up a YouTube video on it because I can never remember, but Carly makes it a little bit easier. You just go to read out service data and it's going to give you a couple different um, parameters here. You've got your front brakes, rear brakes, oil quality, brake fluid, spark plugs, and an overall vehicle check. Now the cool thing with Carly that you don't have built into your car, uh, at least that it surfaces to you, is with Carly it shows you the remaining lifespan in both miles and percent, which is pretty cool. Now, just looking at this, I can tell that I actually forgot to reset my oil. Uh, the last couple of oil changes, it looks like it says that the last service date was 7, 2018. And I know I've done a few oil changes since then. But uh, anyway, with this, you can reset all these right from your phone. Makes it a little bit easier. Next, we have battery reset. And so if you're not familiar with this, basically on a lot of modern BMWs, like I think around 2006 and newer, they started doing this. Basically, the battery has a computer built in that measures the lifespan and the amount of time it's spent since your last battery change. And the car actually adjusts how much the battery uh, gets charged over time. And so when you first put the new battery in, it doesn't have to charge it as much. And then over time, it will gradually increase the voltage. So basically what that means is that whenever you swap out your battery in your car, you can't just throw a new one in and be done with it. Uh, you actually have to tell the car that the battery has been replaced. That way all these systems can reset themselves and it knows exactly how much to charge the battery. Now because of that, that meant that back in the day, the BMW dealership sort of had like this monopoly over their own batteries because they were the only ones that had the software to do that reset. But now with car Carly, anybody can do this at home right in their driveway. That means that you can shop around, you can buy whatever brand of compatible battery that you want for your car. You can do the registration and save some money. I think that when you consider the cost of having a new battery installed and registered at the dealership, that alone I think makes Carly worth the money. So just looking down at the bottom here, there's a couple more features that I'll touch on. There's a diesel particle filter feature. Uh, that doesn't really apply here because this is a gasoline powered E90. There's a feature where you can reset the adaptations on your automatic transmission. Again, it doesn't apply here because this is a manual car. Uh, for cars that have the electronic parking brakes, I think that like the BMW SUVs have that. There's a feature where you can actually put that into service mode. You might find that helpful, but anyway, you get the idea. There's a ton of different useful features in here that are baked into one clean and very easy to use app. Now I've seen a lot of people complain like on the forums about Carly being a subscription service, but honestly for how much use you're gonna get out of it, I really don't think that it's that expensive and they only charge you one time per year. There's a lot of misconception that it's uh, like a monthly thing like Netflix where you're just being charged month after month, but no, you only pay once annually for it. So at the time that I'm recording this video, the adapter is 79 US dollars if you buy it by itself. If you buy the adapter and the app together, the adapter is $71 and the app is $533 per month. Again, billed annually, so that's around $64 per year. Well, that's all folks. I hope that this video helped you decide whether or not Carly is for you. Like I said, I've been a Carly customer for the last three years and I know that there's other paid apps out there that kind of like work in a similar way or have some overlapping features, but Carly has been the tool that I've trusted with my own car. If you have any questions about Carly, drop a comment down below. I will try my best to answer them, but thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.